Hi, I am Seth and welcome to the channel. This image was generated using SDXL and passed through the refiner. Also, using a new tool called Revision, I was able to take this image. And this one. To make this. I also managed to color this black and white image accurately. Well, it's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty close. And I did all of this using my own process and automatic double one double one. Let me show you how. Automatic double one double one had a significant update in version 1.6. With this version, we get support for the SDXL refiner, new control net models, and new SDXL features like revision and reference, which do not require any control models. In this video, I will quickly cover how to get started with version 1.6, then focus on showing you the revision function and some control net models like depth, recolor, and canny. Skip this part of the tutorial if you already have version 1.6, but watch the revision and recolor sections as I will show you my own process and methodology to achieve the desired results. If you have followed my previous video tutorial on installing automatic double one double one, then you should already have version 1.6. If you don't, you can update it by going into your Stable Diffusion folder, right-clicking, and opening a terminal. Once the terminal is opened, just type git pull and then press enter. Close the terminal and launch 1111. If you don't want to go through the manual process or if you cannot install Python and Git, then just go to the automatic 1111 GitHub page, scroll down, and you should see a version 1.0 prezip link. Click that and download the sdwebui.zip source file. This is only for NVIDIA GPUs. After downloading, extract the folder contents. Then click on update.bat and let it run. After it finishes the installation, click on run.bat. All links will be in the description. You need to update ControlNet as well. Go to Extensions and click on Check for Updates. If you see new commits on ControlNet, click Apply and Restart UI. This will update ControlNet. If you have the Lycoris extension installed, you should disable and then delete the extension manually. In version 1.6, you no longer need an extension to use Lycoris. You can just put Lycoris models in the LoRa folder. Before you start with ControlNet on SDXL, some of the models are very heavy on the system. If you have 8GB of VRAM, then right-click and edit the webui.bat file and add the following. If you are on a 6 gigabits GPU, then edit and change the following to low VRAM. Save and close. All the SDXL control net models are available via Hugging Face. If you are downloading the diffuser models, which are official from Stability AI, download the full .safe tensors file for best results. Choose the 256 LoRa dot safe tensors for other models over the 128 ones. Now go to Settings, and you will see a new option called Stable Diffusion XL. Click on it. A higher aesthetic value here makes the AI more opinionated, meaning it does not follow the exact prompt. Hence, the positive value is higher than the negative value. I have not played around with these values, so I suggest leaving it as it is for now. Let's try out the SDXL refiner. I am putting in a simple prompt. When using an SDXL checkpoint, always keep the resolution at 1024 by 1024, otherwise you might see weird results.
Now, let's enable the refiner and generate the image for comparison. Here, the switch at value means at which step you want the model to change. Say the sampling steps are at 100. A 0.8 value means it will use the base model for 80 steps and switch to the refiner model for the last 20 steps. A value of 1 means it won't switch at all. And a value of 0.5 would mean it switches at 50 steps. These types of distortions are prevalent in SDXL. To fix it, click on the high res fix and expand it. Use an upscaler if you want to upscale the image as well. I am using the 4X Full Hardy Remacri upscaler here. Now we have both images, let's compare them. Now, let's check out ControlNet. I am just adjusting the settings. For the first example, I am showing the depth model. Here, you still have to tick mark enable to enable control net. We got a cute dog from the prompt. Let's try and change the dog to a cat. Nice. ControlNet has a new revision function that does not require any models. This allows you to take subjects from a source image and generate a completely new image based on the prompt. It sounds simple, but it's not. I had to play around a lot to get the desired results. I am selecting this image because I want the mountain as the main subject. In Control Net Unit 1, the second image, the main subject would be a dog. Here, Revision Clip Vision basically will combine the two images while giving weightage to your prompt. However, the Revision Ignore prompt will completely ignore anything in the prompt. So what it has done here is that it has given too much weightage to the second image and somehow blended it to be a hybrid wolf rather than an actual dog. Also, there is no mountain anywhere. By the way, I left the prompt empty. What I will do here is reduce the control weight of the second image to 0.6 and see what happens. Now, it is more like a cat. Let me explain what is happening here. The AI understands that there is some animal in the image, and since the prompt is empty, it is filling the dog with an animal, any animal for that matter. 
If I reduce the control weight further, I might get a completely different animal. Still, there is no mountain, so I should reduce the control weight further. Reducing the control weight worked. It gave me the mountain, but I have an eagle instead of a dog. I am putting in a simple prompt, Mount Fiji, dog and field. Now, it's correct and exactly what I wanted. Just to show you that the control net revision is working, I won't change the prompt but disable control net and regenerate the image. Without control net revision, you can see the mountain in the back, but the focus is again more on the dog. Recolor is an impressive tool, but it took me hours to get it right. What I will do here is show you two examples. Both images have intricate details, and using my method, you can get the recoloring accuracy spot on. I have two black and white images, we'll select the bird one first. I will keep the settings as it is and put in a prompt. An ultra realistic photo of a bluebird. For recolor, you need a prompt. The prompt can be specific or generic. What I mean is you can just put a generic prompt like, a color photograph, highly detailed. I found it best to use specific prompts rather than generic ones. This is not what I expected. To fix this, I will change the control mode from balance to my prompt is more important. This is much better. What I just did was basically tell the AI to focus on my prompt rather than the control net image. The AI generates a near replication of a bluebird and tries to overlap its colors over the base image. Now, this is better, but most of the feathers towards the right side of the image are not colored. This is because the AI does not have the exact intricate details since it gives my prompt more importance than the control net image. To get more coloring accuracy, I will use the same image twice in two separate control net models instead of one. I will select Kenny first, tick mark pixel perfect, and change the control mode back to balance. Kenny will help define the feathers of the bird. Here, I will choose recolor. Don't tick mark pixel perfect, as it takes the whole image. Also, I want the AI to recolor from 30% of the total steps. The starting control step value will be 0.3. And the control mode should give more importance to my prompt.
you can see how this method is way more accurate. This method will also work with a human and map the hair details correctly. I will change the prompt to portrait of female, close up, candid street photo, high quality, detailed. The coloring accuracy is excellent. I am sure you can get better results using this method with more tweaking. I hope this video tutorial was helpful. To conclude, Automatic 1111 is still rocking, and as I said in the previous Comfy UI tutorial, I like Comfy UI, but I would not replace 1111. To be honest, I use both, and in my intensive testing, I can produce the same results in both workflows after the version 1.6 update. I will continue to upload tutorials on both user interfaces. Your likes and subs are extremely helpful for the growth of the channel. It also keeps me motivated to roll out tutorials on AI. Thank you for all the support given so far. Until next time.